Great to have you with us. Now, members and executives of the New Patriotic Party, NPP, have expressed satisfaction at the withdrawal of two controversial amendments proposed by the party's parliamentary caucus. These amendments would have seen Ghanaians with dual nationality barred from vying for party positions and members of parliament empowered to appoint their own constituency executives. Majority leader Osei Chairman Tabonso, however, confirmed the withdrawal at Sunday's conference after President Ekufado himself announced saying a group that that fiercely opposed this proposal is MPP United Kingdom branch, which released a statement before the Congress saying so. We have with us on the line a representative of the branch, Sam Ando. Um, he's joining us on Skype. Sam, you must be pleased with this decision. Yes, I am. Why so? Well, it's, it's clear. I mean, in the 21st century, we need to be doing things that would advance the overriding interest of the country, not only MPP, and the president has just done that. Mm. In what way is this decision pleasing the, the, the general Ghanaians and not just the MPP? Um, I mean, if you know the history of dual citizenship, it is quite clear. If you look at the UK, if you look at Germany, if you look at America, there's no way they would be treating their own people as second-class citizens, okay? They go through all the world. The, the excellence of dual citizenship is to make sure that the human resources are optimized to the best of the, the country. So we Ghanaians, considering ourselves as beacon of democracy, we cannot be seen practicing the antithesis of democracy, which is not going to inure to the benefit of the country. Now, we've got human resources. I mean, humans are our best resources. So to treat our own people as second class in their own country, it's quite not the best thing to do. I mean, it's, it would, it's not in the interest of the country to do, to do that when you are trying to marginalize or if, if you like, uh, putting your own people at a disadvantage. I mean, who is going to lose mm. it's the country that is going to lose right now parliament is currently being petitioned for the underlying law within the constitution which bars dual citizens from running for office as members of parliament um to be for that law to be repealed and um, what is your position on that it is quite clear i mean in the 21st century you don't want to have a law that has no relevance now if you look at our history we're not going to go through that. But if you look at our history, if you talk about our legions, I mean, throughout our history, political history, all the coups that we've had, okay, you cannot even attribute it to the fact that there was a break of war, our legions. So if we're talking about our legions, then we're talking about something that would put that in a position where we would put our country second. But there hasn't been any situation where someone with dual citizenship has put Ghana second and put the other country and none of dual citizens. So quite clear mm. we do not understand why we, we have such a clause or provision in our constitution when we are seeking mm. to be the best in the world. How are we gonna right. Green, move a bit to your left there so we can um, see you better. Right, it's much better now. Now, uh, Sam, you made a point that this law has lost its relevance because basically uh, the persons who even committed high treason um, against the state did not have any, um, had all the allegiance on paper to Ghana. But the argument is also raised that in, an, in a world where um, so many people are migrating overseas, losing faith with the Ghanaian dream, it would be necessary that um, you would want to be a Ghanaian fully. I mean, there are a number of members of parliament, for instance, who were dual citizens, and when they became members of parliament, in order to run for office, they had to um, um, remove, uh, swear off their citizenship to other countries and keep their allegiance to Ghana. Can that not be done, at least? Yes, but not... At, not to the detriment of, of, of the country. Now, I mean, citizenship 
citizenship or nationality or fidelity or loyalty is not a function of the kind of citizens you, you have. It is attitude, okay? It is attitude. You can have somebody with a single nationality and the person will not be loyal. The person will not be proactive. The person will not be advancing the overall or over, overriding majority, overriding interest of, of the majority. So it is quite simplistic to say that, oh, okay, we want people to be loyal. We want to be to, people to be patriotic. And therefore, we should have single citizen. Mm. It is it has never done any any anyone. Now the fact of the matter is that what is quite troubling is the fact that if 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 you say you are a Ghanaian British, if you are in, in, in England, you'll be treated as second class. So you go to your own country and then you are treated as what? Also second class because you have citizenship. But why would you want to be a member of parliament in a country where you've decided that it's not enough to be a citizen of you'd have to add the citizenship of another country before uh, you can live and work and um, fulfill your aspirations isn't that breaking faith with your home country how would that amount to breaking faith with your own country i mean boris johnson is called dual citizenship nigeria practices dual citizenship signal uh senegal practices citizenship now when we play football we don't we don't mind okay we blend everything we need to be looking at what will be in the best interest of our country to say that that we would have dual citizens and therefore if they they have dual nationality they will not advance the interest of the party the party or the country that 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 is problematic so as a country, what do we want to do? We want to ad advance the core interest or the best interest of the country. And it's not automatic that if you are a single national, you're going to advance the core interest of the party. So you have members of parliament who some of them may not be advanced, advancing the interest mm. of the party. How do we just oppose that? How do we reconcile these two things? Right. So, um, just so we are clear, you are pleased with the withdrawal of the uh, proposal for amendments on Saturday, on Sunday's conference, and you would like it to be extended to the law in the constitution which uh, bars dual citizens from running for members of parliament. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. right mm. So. Right. So. And and we want to applaud our president. I mean, our president, at any given time, when tested. He mm. passes with what distinction, and this is what we need mm. in the 21st century: a, 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 a president that is proactive, a president that is what pragmatic, a mm. president that is what people-centered, a president that is okay. solution-driven. Okay, right. Thank you very much, Samando, for your time. He speaks for the New Patriotic Party United Kingdom branch. Now, uh, we'll stay with issues having to do with um, the NPP's extraordinary national delegates conference on Sunday because the suspended general secretary of the party who was present at the conference stated that being on suspension for two years is too long. He stated emphatically that he did no wrong. Being on suspension for over two years is, is too long. I think our constitution doesn't provide for that. It didn't envisage the general secretary of the party should be absent from his job for two years. It's not there. But I hope that good sense will prevail. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with myself. I thank God for the heart that I have. Somebody I'm said very he content. expects a formal apology from you. For, and I've not shown enough remorse. You apologize when you've done wrong. And I want to be honest with you. You've not done any wrong. I don't, no, nobody has proved any wrong. I mean, there were, when you, you, you want to see a compelling wrong, you understand. So I am happy with myself. The party took a decision. I respect the party. I accepted it. I disagreed with that decision. And I carried on with my life. And I still, whatever little I can do to support the party, I do it. That was quite major point yesterday, um, that is Sunday, at uh, the NDC, the MPP's Extraordinary Delegates Conference. Now, recently, we spoke with founding member of the MPP, uh, Dr. Marco Tufo, who said that we must hasten slowly if we want to reinstate a character like Kwame Major Paul. We took a decision to first 
give them all the chance to defend themselves for specific reasons. Now, most people don't know the reasons. And if some of the reasons should come out, okay, they may or may not prejudice people's minds and even affect some of their political future, some of them. Uh, when people want a person to be reinstated, uh, they just say it, because, but they don't know the reason why he was suspended in the first place. And I am not going to sit here to explain the reasons. Let's just say that there were good reasons why he was suspended but against the interests of the party. Mm. Okay? Now, if you, I'm going to give you examples. Right. I'll give you only two examples. And uh, if you're uh, an adopted son, you are inside a home with your mother and your stepfather. And your stepfather annoys you, upsets you, says something to the extent that if your father was a sensible, uh, responsible man, you wouldn't be sitting here. And then the boy beats the stepfather out of extreme anger. Now, later on, the boy thinks about it and says, no, I have offended my mother. Then he starts going to church, he shows remorse and all that. And people come and say, the stepfather, having thrown the boy out, should please consider and bring the boy in. You think the stepfather will readily accept the boy because the boy has gone to church? Mm. No. It will depend on the real crime. Some stepfathers will be afraid of the boy. They will be afraid of the temper. Okay? Mm. And these things can happen. Take a thief. Take a, an accountant as an example. Who has stolen monies in a business? He's been caught and dismissed or suspended. And then he starts going to church. He starts visiting people. He shows remorse. He, he's very apologetic to people, very pleasant. Is that basis to assume that when he, you admit him and he comes back and he has a chance to steal again, he will not do it? The people who made the decision will know best what change of mind or what attitude they must adopt. So those are the views of Dr. Mwakutso for a leading member of the NPP. Let's go on the phone lines now and speak with political scientist Dr. Ali Duseidu. Uh, he's a lecturer at the University of Ghana on what he makes of these developments so far. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Seidu. So here we have... Um, Mr. Kwame Japong saying that it's unconstitutional in the first place that he should stay on suspension for so long. And then we've also heard Dr. Marco Tufo saying that a show of remorse would not even be enough reason to reinstate him. We must consider what he did wrong. What do you make of all this? I think uh, he, committed a, he committed a crime or he's deemed to have committed a crime. Mm. But suspension is not a finality in the issue. Mm. I think the, N the MPP as a political party will have to bring this issue to a conclusion. In, I remember when, when this whole thing started, the suspension. I think I heard, I wasn't aware whether it was uh, then candidate, Blackberry and Nakupado, one of the leading members, said that these people have to step aside so that the party will prepare and quickly and win elections and then contest the elections. Then after the elections, they will deal with the issue. Mm. I think it's one power and they have to get to what? The finality. I think the, these issues will get to the final level so that they will know their fate. Whether the party is packing them from the party or they are not going to come, whatever the decision might be, then they will not have the basis to contest it. If they contest it and then the final judgment is done, then they will know that I'm no longer part of the MPP, so I wouldn't even bother for it. But whatever decision that you arrive at, it has to be done. Even look, no matter the magnitude of crime people have committed, they have been forgiven. Mm. I think there are, there are two issues why maybe this has been delayed, speculatively. I think, one, people, people assume that if uh, Komunai Japan, Apolapoko, and Samikta were not part, they didn't play so much role 
in the 2016 election, and they won anyway. Mm. So whether they are there or not, it won't change anything. It won't change the fortune. Mm. Because the argument that we were making was that we have a constituency. We have supporters behind us. If you do this way, our supporters are going to punish you in a way mm. by not voting for you. But they went ahead and won the election. So they, now the, the, the importance, in a way, of these three people in the party is not gradually being reduced by their victory. So they mm. think that whether they are here or not, we don't even care. And then two, there are people who are holding on to the positions that these people want to be reinstated back to, either in an acting capacity or whichever capacity. And they like it. They have made it openly clear that they like it. So these people coming back with that, those people are going to lose those positions. Okay. So people have vetted personal interest in whether they will reinstate him or not reinstate him. So mm. these two things couple, come together to make it a very delicate issue. They right. must tread cautiously. Right. Uh, but that's also that's you. Uh, Dr. Zedi, sorry about that. Um, this, on the second point that you raised, do you think that um, perhaps these persons who are acting in positions of chairman and general secretary may have something to do with his continued stay in suspension? I remember before the, I think immediately after the election, there was this talk, I think the acting chairman was interviewed when they were going to wait uh, for La Popo. And I think it was online, YouTube and other places. And I said, ah, I am now the acting chairman. So why are you asking me when are we going to reinstate for our purpose? I am the acting chairman now, and I like it. He said it. I think you can Google YouTube and other places. You say it. It was very clear. So somebody is able to make this statement. It means that he likes what he's doing, the acting capacity rule that he's playing. So bringing somebody back means that he's going to lose that particular position. Mm. So whether it is poking outwardly or it's hidden within them, it's some people's interests at stake. And people will do everything to protect their interests. People are also saying that mm. Osa Japan wants to come back because he thinks the party now is in power and he's coming to benefit. And, you know, that's a personal interest. What they do about but, but, but see, they might... Uh, yeah, right. Uh, so sorry about that, Dr. Seydoux. Um, the point here is that even the National Council that decided on the suspension of Mr. Kwame Japo and Mr. Paul Afoko was about 70 people. Um, you've named an acting chairman and an acting general secretary, just two people. Can these people sway or heavily influence an entire party that much so that a key decision like this cannot be made? Why was Paul Afoko and general, uh, uh, the general secretary, Kwame Japo, suspended? There were only two people in the party. So why were they thinking that their actions and inactions was going to affect the interests of the party? You understand? Said they were not calling for meetings. They were not performing their constitutional because they had an interest. They believed they were supporting people other than the candidate of uh, flag bearer, Akufado. So if the, two, if the actions of these two or three people were so grievous and could sway public opinion and the victory of the party to the extent that they would suspend them, why do you think that the acting uh, two people in an acting position cannot also have that similar power? You understand? It's a mm. logic. So if they thought that the actions were so important that if they didn't take them out of those positions, they won't win elections, then you also think that the actions of those actions can also be so strong that they may also have a way of fighting it back. I'm not saying that's what is happening. Mm. But I said speculatively, it could be it's, one it's of the possible. reasons why... It's possible. Yes. Yeah, it's what you're saying is a, is a possibility. But, uh, but the other reason I also mentioned was the fact that people now think that, oh, these people, whether they come or not, we are going to win elections in a way. Which is actually and, the and next point. Everything. Which is actually yes, the next point I was going to raise. Because you, yes. you, you, have, you have already mentioned that they were able to win the election without these two persons. And so it looks like their relevance is waning. Wouldn't that be a dangerous gamble to make? The dynamics of every election are different. What could win you an election in 2016 could possibly not win you in 2020. Yeah, I, I think it was, it was more difficult for the MPP to win elections from, from opposition than being in government. So they were thinking that if we're in the opposition and all the odds were against us, and then we were able to suspend these guys, and then we move forward to win elections, how much more when we are in government, when, when, we, are, when we have power, and then we can still do without them? I, I, I agree that every member of the party has a following. They have constituency. People they appeal to. People who voted for them. And this is actually won elections. Constitutionally, uh, this is actually won elections. Elections that was conducted uh, at, at the national level, national delegates conference. So it's suggested that people still support them. But, but the mm. extent to which the support is, is now, uh, what's it, the weight of the support now is something that we cannot verify. Mm. Over the years, we have, months, we have seen people rally, hold press conferences, demonstrate. Put, try to put pressure on the party to reinstate Komna Japan. One, is this president genuinely born out of their love for him? 
or it has been stage managed. That is another thing that okay. we have to determine. But to the extent that people can still hold press conferences and put pressure to bear for the reinstatement of one person, you still feel that he has constituency. Mm. But over the years, we have seen in Ghana's democracy that people who have been disaffected and they've left political parties doesn't usually affect the chances of the political party. Mm. So in the NDC and the NPP. Do and you I think, think that you, finally, party, finally, sir, finally, sir, do you think that the NPP is losing anything without um, having Kwabne Japan particularly, uh, since we are talking about him? Yeah, I think every individual is important. Especially given the history of Kwabne Japan and the likes of Paula Foka and those people in the party. They have, they have done so much. Okay. They have contributed. It is high time the party started to forgive okay. and then embrace these people. If you say they haven't expressed remorse enough, what is remorse? Is it just openly apologizing? People may apologize and they may not mean it. People may not apologize and they will live lives that suggest that they have expressed remorse. Why will he out of the three people show up in the, the party's extraordinary delegates conference if okay. he wasn't uh, being regretful of the actions that he has done? So sometimes you're not openly saying it, but your mm. actions also say, suggest that you have expressed regret and then you want to move forward uh, with the party going high. You want to come back to the party moving forward. So I think right. we have to look at those things and then be a little bit cautiously moderate and try to get uh, mm -hmm. reach a finality. So that this okay. dispute will forever linger until they make a final determination. This okay. will always come up. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali Duseidu. He is a senior political science lecturer at the University of Ghana.